move to the last presentation, uh, but not the least. Uh, Alvaro Fides from the Technical University of Valencia. Uh, we have a presentation called Use the Use of Hierarchical Model View Controller Architecture for User Interaction in an AAL Environment. Well, I will present this job in, uh, on behalf of Alejandro Medrano. Uh, I'm Alvaro Fides, I'm the last one in the list because I just collaborated in the project universal. Uh, but all okay, uh, goes to UPN people. So what we are going to see in this presentation is uh, a proposal for a generic design of user interface infrastructure for AAA systems. We will see that we will have to deal with uh, a list of uh, several aspects. And we will later see a proposal for a generic design and later an implementation of this design in the scope of the project universe. Okay, so first, uh, the most usual way of approaching user interfaces in all applications uh, is usually the MVC pattern or uh, model view controller. It's separating the three main tasks of uh, user interfacing uh, on the own. We have view, we have controller, and we have, control. for instance, in this presentation, uh, the view is exactly what we are seeing right now, this screen, and the controller um, works for interfacing uh, with the user. For instance, if I go here and press a key, the view changes, and I can also use the controller to uh, tell the application to do something with its model, which is the part in which the application does something. For example, I can remove this part. So we have these three parts, the view, which is what the user uh, sees or hears, the controller, which takes care of interfacing with the user, and the model, which is what the application actually does. But this might not be the best approach for AAL uh, situations, because there are several aspects that are special to these systems. Uh, one of them is uh, the possible uh, user interference and also uh, the level of uh, use that this user has uh, with this kind of system. So again, we have three aspects we have to do. We have impairments, for instance. We cannot use an acoustic uh, output for a user that has uh, some hearing impairment because we are not sure that he will hear it. Uh, we have user acceptance. Because uh, in most cases, AAL systems, which are oriented to uh, elderly people most of the times, are not used to this kind of uh, interfaces uh, of screens or uh, voice recognition systems. So uh, these interfaces must be easy to use and easy to understand, which is something that we all want to do. And uh, lastly, we have uh, the fact that most AAL systems are usually distributed systems by nature. So uh, they are expected to be presented and interfaced in many different places at the same time. For instance, we can deploy an AEA platform in a house and we should be able to access it from the kitchen or even from the bathroom. So how do we achieve all of this? With multimodality, which is the property uh, of being able to show or interfacing with the user with different modalities and technologies. So, uh, how do we achieve multimodality in AL systems? Uh, the first step is to differentiate between data uh, and representation of this data. We achieve this with a meta model. A meta model is a way for uh, decoupling the what we are um, planning to show to the user and how it is going to be shown to the user. The meta model is an abstraction of the most typical. Uh, user interfaces uh, like uh, inputs and outputs, we will see that later. And it's like an intermediate language that can be uh, used to separate the applications from the rendering of the interfaces. So in this case, applications can focus on how uh, the application works, that is their business logic, which uh, would be the model that we have seen before. And the renders take care of 
how this is shown to the user and how it is interfaces that, it, that is the view and the control parts that we have seen before. This is an example of a meta model, a generic one. Uh, we see that we have the most basic types of uh, interfaces with users, which are input for a user to say something to the system, output to let the system uh, show something to the user, and we also have labels for additional information, and uh, we can group all these elements in groups. Uh, we can see, for instance, uh, the most typical way of uh, presenting these elements in a graphical form, which is something we are uh, used to. And they can uh, vary depending on the type of data they are using, like text or numbers. Uh, so, what finally achieves multimodality is the renderers. By using different renderers, we can uh, represent the same information expressed in the meta model that we have seen before in different ways. For instance, this instance that we have created uh, from the meta model, which is just using a text output and a text input, we can represent it graphically with a graphic renderer. We can uh, uh, represent it with a voice render, which uh, would use synthesized voice to represent text output and would use voice recognitions to get the text input from the user. So in the end we have a uh, couple the what we want to show and what we want to get from the user, from how it is presented to the user and um, taken from the user. So, in the end, the applications do follow the MVC approach, but in a more uh, independent way. In the case of the applications, the model remains the same, the application logic remains the same, but the view and controller uh, things are not part of the application itself. The application just needs, just needs to represent the view in terms of the abstract uh, meta model then it can be interpreted by renderers uh, who are the ones who take care of um, the view part and the controller part. And the model part of the renderers uh, becomes just uh, translating into the meta model. Uh, what do we get with all of this? Is there a real gain uh, by using this uh, at first complex? infrastructure for a uh, user interface well there are some advantages which are uh, this but using this what you get is extensibility you can extend the abstract uh, meta model to include more different kind, kinds of uh, inputs and outputs like charts or tables you get reusability because once you create a render you can use it by several applications at the same time you get maintainability because uh, if there is a bug, you only need to fix one renderer instead of fixing all the interfaces of all the applications. The same goes for testability. You only need to test uh, a renderer once and not all the applications. And finally, scalability. Because uh, by having independent renderers, you can later add them to increase the functionality of a system. You can start with a graphic renderer and later add a voice recognition or uh, voice render. Uh, what we are uh, <coughs> going to present here is how this was applied in the Unicode software. We will present uh, uh, a generic design and later a concrete implementation of this design in the scope of this project. Uh, Universal is separate from the, uh, the, European, uh, the, uh, the European Union and it's uh, it aims to create a reference architecture for ARL systems. And it's based on several other previous ARL projects, like, like for instance OASIS, that we have seen before. This is the meta model of the Universal. You will see that, well, you may not see it from there, but it follows more or less the same structure that we have described, described before for the generic uh, meta model. You see here that there are inputs, there are outputs, and concepts. 
it is represented in terms of uh, RDF or resource description framework. This is used for representing semantic data because this is how Universal works. So the applications, when they want to show some view, only need to represent this view or what they want to show in terms of this model. They make instances of these elements and they compose the view that they want to show. Then later, uh, the renders take care of representing this information. This is the generic design that we have come up in Universal for the renders. This design can be followed by any kind of render. So we can have a graphic renderer or a voice renderer and the outcome follow this design. We have seen that, for instance, this instance of the meta model, which represents a view, comes to the uh, renderer, which is composed by first a uh, main hub, which is like uh, the container of the render, like uh, the gluing structure of the render. We have the metamodel controller, which is the one in charge of connecting to the uh, metamodel representations and getting them from the applications. And then it sends them to the CMU or contain container management unit. It takes care, uh, it's like a control center of views and takes care of deciding which view to show at each time and which, uh, with which representation and render. It uses the uh, view mapper to translate from uh, the view in terms of abstract meta model into the concrete implementation of this view. For instance, if we have a text input, it will tell us that uh, the best way to do it is with a text, uh, text box to be filled by the key. Then finally, this is shown in the physical world to the user. And when the user uh, puts some input, uh, the, information, the information flows back uh, and in the opposite uh, direction, back to the applications. One advantage that we get uh, from the meta model of Universal it is that it is hierarchical. Uh, we can have uh, this instance here of uh, a view that we want to show. It has a simple container and three elements. And it is a uh, hierarchy. Uh, so each one of these elements can be treated independently and hierarchically by the renderer. So each one of these elements has its own MVC model, which uh, is handled by the architecture that we have seen before in an independent way. So we have this button follows the path that we have seen before, this uh, other one the same, and text the same. All of this in uh, hierarchy, which allows uh, for us to make more modular uh, renders with a more uh, generic uh, architecture than the one we have seen. How is this implemented in Universal, this generic design? Well, in Universal, uh, the metamodel uh, instances are represented in terms of events. These events are forwarded to some buses. The output bus takes care of uh, taking the, the instances of the views from the applications to the user and the input bus from uh, the user and its input back to the applications. Then we have a general control application which is called the dialog manager which, which takes care of um, organizing the events, ordering them and deciding where to show them. Uh, in this case, um, this matches the CMU unit that we have seen before, the unit that, that takes care of controlling which views are shown at each time. But it works in a, a system-wise level. Inside uh, one specific handler, uh, sorry, so one specific renderer of a uh, universal, we have developed a graphic renderer for uh, this platform. This is called the UI handler because in Universal the renderers are called handlers. And uh, it connects to the input buses and output buses with uh, subscribers and publishers, which uh, would take care of uh, the MMC module that we have seen before in the generic design. And then they uh, transmit it to the translator, which is uh, like the VM, the view mapper that we have seen before which takes care of translating that uh, view into something specific 
uh, that we will see later. So uh, we see that it lacks from the CMU unit, the uh, container management uh, unit, because as I said before, this task is mostly done by the dialogue manager, which is outside the webinars. So uh, this translator uh, would be like a small CMU as well, not only the view mapper, because it only has to deal with one simple view at a time, and it doesn't have to deal with queues. Uh, so this is how it would match the design that we have seen before. Remember, remember that the CMU is mostly done by the dynamic which is outside the, the handler. This is the specific model that uh, the handler uses. It uses the Java Swing technology to represent uh, all the abstract uh, elements that it may receive. You will see that it translates more or less one to one to the meta model that we have introduced in RDF for Universal before. It's the same structure. So, for instance, if you get a one input element from the RDF meta model, you translate it to a Java swing element. So, uh, what are the conclusions uh, from uh, applying this uh, infrastructure that might at first seem a bit complicated to, uh, to implement. Well, apart from all the advantages that we have seen before, uh, the, these hierarchical uh, MVC patterns allowed us to create uh, this generic design that we have seen for the renders, which also allows us in the future to create new renders following, following this design and do it in a faster and easier way, in a modular way. Uh, we have seen the implementation in uh, Universal. And well, that's more or less everything we can show from, from the presentation of Universal. We have seen that applying this pattern is the best uh, way to do when you are dealing with AL platforms that are distributed and have several applications at the same time, and we have prove that it is uh, the best way to do this instead of uh, having to implement user interfaces uh, for each application. Finally, some future work uh, to be done in uh, Universal, for instance. One of them is the look and feel packages. We could uh, also make independent the use of look and feel packages for uh, renders or voices. Uh, it would allow us to change uh, the way in which uh, graphical user interfaces are shown in a more modular way. And finally, uh, adding more, more meta model extension packages like the ones I commented before, like charts or tables, because uh, the meta model of Universal right now is very simple. And that's more or less everything. Thank you for your attention. You have a question? Thank you very much. Any question? Vicente. Uh, hello, congratulations for your presentation. It's very technical. So maybe Carlos yes, I know it's a, it's a technical uh, presentation, but it, it's a technical job. To, to make question, but, uh, what, uh, you mentioned in the conclusion that it has been proved that uh, with this model is more simple uh, to develop uh, user yes. interfaces models. Do you have any quantitative figure or, or numbers about the, uh, well, it uh, saves 20% uh, of the time of development or, or, or just estimated figures? No, we don't have the uh, estimated figures yet because uh, we just uh, created the first, the first uh, handler following this generic design in Universal. It was about uh, a month ago and we have only one of them right now, but it was a uh, a subjective impression for, from the developers that it was uh, much easier to deal with uh, this generic approach than the handlers we previously had in Universal, which didn't follow this direct MVC approach, and they were pretty hard to understand and to get uh, how they function from the draw code that we, we had before. Do you have a rough idea about uh, your own feeling? 
it's a uh, uh, subjective impression uh, by now because we, as I said, this was uh, completed in less than a month ago. But as soon as we get uh, more renderers developed for Universal, uh, we can get uh, more evaluation results. I uh, redirect you to the evaluation results of the project Universal to finally see how this benefits developers of uh, applications for Universal. The difference uh, in percentile uh, among the, the classical models for the MVC in terms of the execution of the applications. Yes, I have some experiences from a previous project, which is also considered by, uh, by Universal. And it is true that uh, by using all this uh, complex user interface uh, infrastructure, it adds some delay to the to the final interaction with the user. But in the end, it also depends on the renderer. Uh, if you make a renderer that uh, makes this very visible to the user, it has a more direct effect on, on the delay. For instance, if you make a renderer that doesn't take care of uh, I don't know how to say, dead times between uh, reactions, the user gets or perceives that there is a delay there. However, you can create a render that it's more dynamic and uh, maybe some, so some splash screens or wet screens or some progress bars and so on. In the end, this uh, decoupled way of dealing with the representation allows us to use different renders that can uh, be used or we can create new renders that take care uh, of this in a different and more faster way. Do you think, and for your, your, for on top, your case, that users can uh, reject that uh, an IL system if uh, is is a program in program in MC <coughs> for its time, or or you don't think so? I would say uh, that the responsibility of uh, the user acceptance relies more on the render that in the underlying infrastructure. According to the tests that uh, we have done until now in Universal, the delay that can be uh, blamed on the infrastructure can be mm, negligible in terms of user acceptance. It is uh, relying more on the, uh, on the renderer and on the concrete implementation of the infrastructure, but not by the fact of uh, having the intermediate metabol thing in the middle of the infrastructure. Okay, any other questions? Hector, please. Does the current uh, uh, controller handle uh, like gestures touch based on the screen? It depends on the render. So if you want a voice and uh, sorry a uh, gesture uh, recognition render you have to develop it. And you are free to develop it. Uh, the advantage of this is not <laughs> that you get those uh, renders, although you can, because if someone else develops this render, you can use it. Uh, the advantage is that the applications uh, using this infrastructure uh, are completely, completely agnostic from how this is presented to the user. So you just create your applications, you define what you want to show to the user and what you want to get to the user, and you may get it using a, a voice uh, handler or a gesture handler or a touch screen handler that is independent from the application. But if you are developing the renderers, you have to develop the renderers. Another question. Is there any tool to create visually the, the views, like in Visual Studio or in Xcode format? Uh, no, currently there is uh, no. Although we are working on uh, developer tools in Universal, so uh, the fact of creating or building these these um, views from the abstract meta model uh, is easier than uh, just typing code. So it could it could be possible to generate these um, instances of the meta model in, with a specific tool. It is something that is very uh, work on in Universal. Anything else? 
Any other question? Okay, so thank you very much. I think we can, unless anyone has any questions for the speakers, no? <laughs> I think we can close the session today. Thank you very much for attending. Now I think we have a nice lunch in a couple of minutes, in 10 minutes or so, so we can have some time to get some fresh air. And then I think lunch will be on the other building. Oh, oh it's just there. So just there, so easy. Thank you very much for attending and I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. And thanks to the presenters.